Let's go to the first slide, Matthew chapter 13. It says in verse 31 and 32, another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, because it's a tiny seed, uh -huh, least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the, the herbs and becomes, becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. So we look at the mustard seed and we see that it's, when you look at that seed, you can hardly see it. In actual fact, what happens, what, I, what I've read up on the mustard tree or the, some have debated, is it a shrub, is it a tree, is it a bush? So there's lots of debates about it, but in different parts of the world, the mustard bush looks differently. But in Palestine, it grows almost like sideways, at a, and it can grow up to the height of 12 feet. But it can get very big. It looks like a mountain eventually going out sideways and up about 12 feet, 8 to 12 feet, and it goes sideways. But that, that mustard bush, when it becomes, it carries at the end, it, it's got those yellow flowers, and it then forms a pod. And those pods have all of these mustard seeds. And when you put the mustard seeds in your hand, it is tiny. The wind can blow those seeds everywhere. It's tiny, but it multiplies. And that's why the Lord uses the mustard seed as this tiny seed that can produce so much more. Amen. This tiny seed that you look so insignificant when you look at a seed, you say, what is this seed going to produce? It's so small. What can come from this small thing? What can come from Jerusalem? What can come from the Lord? What can come from a baby that was born in a manger? What can come from Jesus? Amen. What can come from that one seed? What can come from the kingdom being born through Jesus Christ? What can come from 12 men coming together called by Jesus? What can come from 1,220 people gathering in the upper room expecting? expectant of the Spirit to come. What can come from 120 people? The whole world can get saved from 120 people. So you see, the seed that comes upon us, this kingdom seed that is planted in us by the Holy Spirit, can grow from 120 people to the whole world. Look at the church today. It is massive, but it started small. It started in a manger. It started with the birth of Christ, Him coming to the earth. Him establishing the kingdom, amen? Him speaking about the gospel of the kingdom that will advance to the four corners of the earth. Him sending out the people with a great commission and saying, go out and make disciples of nations. The kingdom is still growing today like this tree that's going out in the branches and the birds find nesting place in this network of the church and the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Isn't this powerful? One seed that was planted, Jesus being that seed, amen? And the kingdom is still growing. And it's still going, and you and I are a part of planting those seeds. And I'm excited this morning to tell you that He doesn't only liken the kingdom to the seed, but He also likens your faith to the mustard seed. And this is a little bit of a different story, and I want to touch on that mostly today, is about your faith. I want to tell you this morning, you don't need big faith, you need the right kind of faith. I want to tell you this morning, you don't need big faith, because big faith often in our minds, is the thing that we have to work up our faith. No, no, it's not about working up your faith. It's where you place your faith in, who you place your faith in. You see, many times we think if we come to church and the worship leader can psych me up in the service, I can have more faith. I want to show you this morning that's not true. Even if you get louder, you don't have more faith. Even if you spit more, there's not more faith. Amen. Come on. You can speak, you can whisper, and if there's, a, if there's faith in the right place, it can affect the same as the person that's shouting at 100,000 decibels in people's ears and deafening them. Amen. Now, that doesn't take away when I get excited, I get loud. It's nothing to do with working up faith. My faith is in the Word of God, and my faith is in Jesus. And so this morning, I want to show you from this mustard seed faith, and let's go to the next slide, how the Lord speaks to us from this. It says, Faith as small as a mustard seed, Matthew 17, 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now, what is the lead up to this comment that Jesus made to them about their faith? The lead up is that there was a, a, a boy with a, a deaf and dumb spirit. And the disciples could not deliver this boy from the Spirit. 
And after they couldn't deliver, the, remember they brought the boy to Jesus and they told the story that this boy would froth by the mouth and he would even be thrown into the fire. And Jesus says, Jesus says, says later to the disciples when they come in the private, Jesus, why could we not cast out this deaf and dumb spirit? And Jesus answers, because of your unbelief, because of your little bit of faith, because of your unbelief. And then he says, for assuredly I say, if you have faith, as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, this problem, this sickness, this demon, and it must move because you command it with mustard seed faith, amen? With a small faith, with a seed that is planted in the kingdom of God, with a faith that is based on what Jesus has done and not what we have done or what we are able to do, amen? You see, Jesus accomplished everything on the cross. Jesus accomplished everything through his death and through his resurrection. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And the Holy Spirit is with us right now. And he's given us his word this morning. And we can stand upon that word. And if your faith is in the right place, you don't need a lot of faith, but you need the right kind of faith to command. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the scripture also says there's a few obstacles to our faith. How many of you know that there's obstacles to our faith this morning? Let's go to the next slide. I want to show you about faith. Faith as small as a mustard seed. Mark 9, verse 19 and verse 28 and 29. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, this is in the book of Mark, Gospel of Mark, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And when he had come into the house, his disciple asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Now, what has the Lord been speaking to us about, about rebuilding the prayer altars? Rebuilding the prayer altars. Now, he said to them by prayer and fasting, some versions leaves out the word fasting and just have the word prayer in there. But I want to say to you, if you don't have a prayerful life, you will have a powerless life. If you don't have a prayerful life, you will have a powerless life. If you're asking God why God's not moving in your life, it's because you're not spending time in the prayer closet. It's because you're not spending time in relationship with God. It's because you're asking God to give you faith, but you're not applying what the Word says, how to get faith. Amen. Now, I've always said this over and over again. You can't go into your prayer closet without the Word of God. How many of you know that you can't just go there and try and imagine what you should pray about? You should know what the Word of God says so that you can pray effectively according to the will of God. I mean, I believe it's so important that we know what the Scripture says because when we ask, we must ask aright, amen? We must ask according to the Word, according to His will, so that we can see God move on our behalf. How many of you believe that God is the healer? Kevin, do you believe that? How many of you believe that God has the power over every demon power? Okay, great. How many of you believe that God is able to heal and raise the dead? Yeah, okay, that's great. We have a lot of um, people that are going to be praying for the sick in this week. We have a lot of people that are going to cast out demons in this week. We have a lot of people that will be raising the dead in this week. Amen. Because that's the church of Jesus Christ. He said, cleanse the leper, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. Amen. That's what Jesus said we must go and do. And he's given us authority over these things. But the problem is our unbelief is. Our faith, so unbelief robs us. It takes us away from what God wants us to do. And let's talk about faith quickly. There's a few points I want to make in the next slide. A small seed has big potential. That little bit of faith that you can put in Jesus because we are weak and He's strong, amen? Your side is faith. His side is miracles. Your side is faith. His side is grace. Your side is faith. His side is wonders and miracles and signs and wonders and healings and deliverances. And salvation, amen. When you put your faith in Him, by His grace, you were saved. You see, your side is the small seed, and the big potential lies on God's side. A small beginning will result in a big result. A small beginning. Let's look at this. Say, for instance, someone's got cancer this morning, and I called him to the front. A small prayer, based in the right faith in Jesus Christ, can heal a big thing called cancer. Come in our mind in these days, how many people do you hear that's got cancer? Cancer is going like, like wildfire through people. Amen. But a small prayer with the right kind of faith can heal that cancer. A small 
start, a small seed that you plant in the Spirit. Because when you pray, you pray in the Spirit. You don't pray in the flesh. Amen. The problem is that we have too much with these eyes that we see. Whoa! Peter hasn't got a leg. Now you think it's impossible. That can't be healed. Sorry, Peter. That's the rest of the life you're going to be hobbling on that one leg. But according to my Bible, nothing is impossible for my God. According to my Bible, that leg is there. I just can't see it. Come on. Do you believe that leg's not there in the spirit? In the spirit, all those things are still there. Just in the physical, he lost the leg. Drip, gone. But God, the creator, can create a new leg. I think our faith is weak in these days because we fill our minds with the wrong things and we allow the wrong things to seep into our hearts and we spend our time on the wrong things. Too much on social media, too little in the Word. Amen? Come on, how much time does Facebook suck up of your time sometimes? Remember the finger? This is the finger of unbelief. (laughs) Next time you start swiping and you find yourself two hours later looking at this one and that one. Ooh, next video. Ooh, next one. Ooh, next one. It's like a drug. It was quite clever when uh, TikTok came out and there's some horrible stuff happening on TikTok. I don't want to even go there. But I just tell the young people, I asked my daughter something about TikTok yesterday, some trends that are on TikTok that are, are disgraceful, and I can't even speak about them. But you need to pray for the young people, and you need to be involved in your teenagers' lives and your preteens' lives, and you need to be asking the questions, what are they watching, who are they following, and even not just young people, older people as well, because now older people are getting addicted as well because it's like a new candy. It's like a new candy on the market, you know, they found something new. Wow, now I can lie in bed all day. Watching video after video. But the thing is, what are you building into your life? What are you allowing to be built into your life? What, what seed is growing in your spiritual life? It's not the size of the seed that is significant, that is significant, but it's the size of the potential in the seed. Your faith is in what Jesus has accomplished and in who He is and the authority you have in Him. Your faith is not based on anything else but what Jesus has accomplished, what He has done upon the cross, what He's able to do, the authority that's in that name. It says whoever calls upon the name of Jesus will be saved. The power of salvation is still in the name of Jesus. There's only one name that people can be saved by, and it's the name of Jesus, Jerome. Amen. Doubt and unbelief is a faith killer. How are you going to get rid of the doubt? How are you going to get rid of this faith killer? If you know there's a problem, how do you deal with it? You fix it. And I'm going to show you from the Word of God how to fix your faith this morning. How many of you want to fix your faith? How many of you know even the disciples said, Lord, won't you increase our faith? Do you know they came to Jesus and asked for, them to, for Him to increase their faith? Listen, but faith can do the impossible, the supernatural. Faith is the answer, but the right kind of faith. Let's move on from there. Faith finds its source in the Word. This is how you fix your faith. This is how you're going to fix your faith. If you haven't been reading the Bible, that is why your faith is weak. That is why you're struggling in your faith walk. This is why you're not moving forward. This is why you're not growing. The Word is so practical. I love the Word of God that it teaches us in Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith comes by. I know that you people can say this verse in your sleep. Amen. But the problem is we don't apply this verse. We must get back into the Word. And we must get back into prayer. And we must get back into praying that the faith may move through the church of Jesus Christ. When Jesus came to a region and people heard about Jesus there, they said, this is the guy that healed my brother in this patch. But you see, this is how the word spread about Jesus. is because there was power, there was authority. When the crowds came together, they brought all the sick hoppling along, saying the sick, the maimed, the demon possessed, they were all there and Jesus healed all of them. I mean, and the word spread about this Jesus that's going from town to town, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, casting out demons. And I mean, imagine you, you heard that every time and every Sunday, everybody's going to bring the sick to the church. Everybody's going to bring those that are possessed to the church because that's where the answer should be. This is what Jesus brought the fame to Jesus. This is what Jesus' word. He didn't only speak the word, he acted the word. Amen. He is the word. 
Listen, it says there, and hearing by the word of God. So if you're hearing the word of God this morning, your faith levels should be rising in the spirit already. You should already be thinking of, who can I pray for? What can I pray for? When can I go pray? How much time do I have to pray? Do I can cut off some time here with the TV, here with the Facebook, here with the family, so I can pray? That's where you should be thinking this morning. Where can I cut off some time to spend with my Savior? Because when you come out of that prayer closet with the Word of God, you come out like Moses that comes down from the mountain, shining with the glory of the Lord, so that when the first sickness comes, you just say, Get out in Jesus' name. 